Department of Education called me and said, Debbie, can you tell us what's going on? And I said to them, this, this you know, teacher has nothing to do with me or the school, nor does the organization. Yes, it shares an office space in an organization which I sit on the board of, but there's really no story here. And the Department of Education was able to get all of the media you know, to just let this go, except for the New York Post, which the New York Post for months was gunning for me and the school. They were always asking for interviews, and I simply made it a rule that I would not speak to the New York Post. And the Department of Education supported me on that. And they also protected me from Fox News, which was always calling as well. And sadly, that weekend, when the pressure mounted from the New York Post, they pressured me to give an interview. Who, the Department of Education. The Department of Education. Well, I, it, the, the the ruling by the EEOC, it's fascinating. It said that it was the Post's article that prompted the Department of Education to force you to resign. This is a quote. It says, significantly, significantly, it was not her actual remarks, but their elaboration by the reporter, creating waves of explicit anti-Muslim bias from several extremist sources that caused DOE to act, the commission's letters, uh, letter said. So. Explain what exactly the article said. The, the headline, I forgot the headline, but it was something like uh, revolting or something like Principal that. Principal revolting. Right. Um, so the, the interview was basically about five to seven minutes long. Uh, the Department of Education had a press person with me on the phone. The Department of Education made you do this? Yes, absolutely made me do this. They knew that I did never want to speak to the Post. And they said it's in the best interest of the school that you speak to this reporter, because if you don't, they're going to be writing something that's not going to be favorable. And my response was, whether I speak or not, they're not going to write anything favorable. And when it came to the line that this is in the best interest of the school, you need to speak to them, we will be on the phone with you, um, I ended up having no choice but to speak to the reporter. And explain what happened then. So what happened um, on the interview is he asked me a few questions. He asked about the organization and its T-shirt, and I simply said to him, there's nothing to speak about in, in this regard. This organization and its T-shirts have nothing to do with me or the school. Therefore, there's really no discussion on this issue. I'm happy to have a conversation with you in regards to the school. And so he asked me one or two questions about the school and then asked me for the root word of the word intifada. And I then went on to say to him, as a reporter, you should have done your homework on this. And his response to me was, yes, I did, and it, I found many definitions for the word, but wanted to have a better understanding of where this word originated from, its root word. And I, as an educator, simply responded and said to him that it comes from the root word of the word infud in Arabic, which is shake off. However, this word has developed, you know, evolved and developed a negative connotation based on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict where thousands of people have died. He then simply said, okay, well, thank you. This was really good. Um, and shortly afterward, we hung up. And within the interview, I had also reinstated that I am someone who does not believe in violence and condemn all violence, any shape, way, or form. The person from the press office who was on the phone you know, reiterated that. She had no issue of my engaging with him in the conversation about the root word of the word intifada. She saw it, that I was an educator and doing what educators do. I did not provide my political opinion or my views. I simply did what educators do, and that is to provide multiple perspectives on an issue to help people critically make their own decisions. And you sued the New York Post, correct? No, I did not. Oh. We're going to come back to this discussion. I also want to ask about the role of the mayor uh, in uh, forcing you to resign, um, and also what this Board of Education uh, ruling means by the federal EEOC. And I'd like to ask your lawyer about that as well. Debbie Amantasser, founding principal of the Khalil Gibran International Academy, forced out by the city of New York. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back with her and her lawyer in a minute.